All right, hi, your 12s, this is Mr. Lim here again, and we're on our second last one for proteins, biological significance of these proteins. Did I spell that right? I think I did. All right, so uh, we're going to be learning about the biological significance of proteins. Duh. All right, and maybe even this protein data bank, that's pretty important as well. So what's the biological significance? Proteins, these act as enzymes in the body, which uh, allow for chemical reactions to occur at biological temperatures. So not only do these proteins, um, you know, build more DNA and build more proteins, um, they also work to do a whole bunch of stuff like um, control the uh, flow of ions, they make muscles move, they do all kinds of things. So these proteins are really important, all right? And they rely on their shape, their shape, to enclose various molecules to either break bonds or form bonds. Okay, so, um, I don't know, here's a carbon dioxide molecule, okay? And at some point, a plant has to break apart this thing, so it has to grab it and then be able to shift in a way to split it apart um, so to break those bonds. Okay, so it depends on the shape of the protein that determines its function. Okay, to enclose on other various molecules or other proteins, um, the shape of the protein must be exactly complementary, which just means that it fits around the other thing, to the shape of the molecule or protein that it's acting on. And so complementary shapes, uh, this has a complementary shape of this, okay? Because, and they have to get really close to each other. All right, so complementary shapes. Uh, small variations in the primary, secondary, or tertiary level can change the shape of the protein. If you change the shape, uh, it no longer, it's no longer exactly complementary to the shape of the target molecule, and therefore it's useless. All right, so if it's not exactly the same shape, it's not going to be able to fit in, and if it's not going to be able to fit in, then it's not going to do anything, and then it's useless. All right, so that's small changes in the primary, secondary, or tertiary level, or even the quaternary level, even. Um, yeah, so small changes in the shape, all right? It might be something along the lines of just this tiny, tiny change where it goes, oop, oop, and then, you know, everything else is the same, but as soon as there's no there's only a smaller interactions, and there's no interactions in that middle part, all right? They're not gonna stick together, they're not going to fit, and therefore they're going to um, cause problems, okay? Um, so, the Protein Data Bank is a global repository of structural data of proteins, including the primary, secondary, and tertiary structures of different proteins of humans, animals, and bacteria, and even viruses, all right? So, what it is is that this Protein Data Bank is like, okay, well, you got this one protein, it looks like this. All right, you got this other protein, it looks like that. Okay, you got this other protein, it looks like this. And it's not just the primary structure like the DNA and the code, it's actually the shape of the protein because the shape is the important part. Okay, by studying the structure of various proteins, we can understand how better to manipulate the function of these proteins to make them more or less effective. All right, so say you want to stop a protein from attaching, you can just be like, well, let's go change the shape of it and therefore it's going to um, not attach. Okay, so say this blue protein attaches to this green protein, and then you don't want this blue protein to attach to this green protein. So what do I do is I create a drug which would sit exactly in this space here, all right? And then now this is one complex of um, a protein and a drug, okay? So now when it goes to combine with this, it's going to be like, oh, I um, don't make that right shape anymore, and so therefore, that cannot bond to that. If that can't bond to that, therefore, it's uh, no longer useful, and this can be pretty useful when you're trying to design drugs to stop things from attaching. Okay, so uh, it's not as if we were going through a global pandemic here, but um, the idea is that if you have the drug that can fit into the virus's um, attachment sites, it means that the virus can't attach, it can't do its thing, and therefore you um, can stop the effect of the virus. And that's some of the development of vaccines and drugs to treat uh, various viruses. That's what they work on. All right, so there, I did that. Okay, understanding the shape of various pathogenic proteins and the complementary shapes of the drugs that inhibit them can help us find other uses for the drugs in other for other pathogenic proteins. Okay, so in other words, if you have like uh, one coronavirus and another coronavirus, and you'd be like, hey, we found a drug that works on this other coronavirus, let's go see if it works on this coronavirus, and then you can look at the proteins on the surfaces of those viruses, and then they say, okay, well, this is how it attaches, 
uh, are they the same? Yes, they are. No, they're not. And then the drugs may or may not work in that way. All right. If the shape of pathogenic protein A closely matches that to pathogenic protein B, um, then any drugs that work from B will may work for A, at least uh, may work for a small modification within that drug. Okay, so maybe, you know, um, these two look quite similar. Okay, that's A and B. And so maybe the attachment site is um, over here with what the molecule is. Okay, so maybe that's the attachment site. Okay, if that's A and B, and then you know that the the blocker for A, okay, here's my drug that fits in that A shape. You're like, oh, that will probably fit in there. And it's like, man, not really. But with a few modifications, uh, yep, yep. Okay, that'll fit better. Okay, so that's how they use this information of the protein structure, the protein shape to um, build things. And that's why this protein data bank is an important um, resource that we can just be like, okay, well, we can search up all of this stuff. Um, and it's useful for, you know, like, um, finding, uh, like allowing communication between scientists to find ways to combat things and rah, rah, rah. Okay. And that's about it. Adios.